This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today to start turning your dreams into a reality. Hey friends, so before I get in this interview with Don Hutcherson and myself, I wanted to um, offer you guys something, Uh, a little excerpt of my book and then also uh, an opportunity for you guys to take. Um, So this is what I wrote. Um, I started asking for help when I was 24. I started seeing a psychologist. I've done intensive outpatient therapy programs and have learned many healthy coping skills. And I know I still have setbacks and negative thoughts like many that just won't go away. For a while, I lost myself for so long, but I found myself again through art the art of scratching my own itch. I've become not passionate, but compassionate about the things again I do by being curious, by being more so creative once again about conducting interviews with my podcast. I'm able to be social and I'm not afraid to ask for help anymore. I still have a long way to go, I know, but... I'm proud of the progress I've made. The negative thoughts is just a bug in my brain, but I'm still me under all of it, and so are you. Having this pull like you need to start something new is a privilege. Not everyone has this pull. You're one of the few. This gravity that is pulling you down because you're scared of what big changes you may make. Is pretty freaking awesome. So, yeah, that was just a little part of the the stuff that I'll be adding in my book that's coming out. Um, But I also want to I want to offer you an invitation to uh, hit the subscribe button every time a new episode of Scratch Your Own Itch comes out. As well as if you're feeling alone and you want to be a creative, but you want to do it under your terms. Please join the Scratch Your Own Itch Create a Life Worth Living Facebook group. And also, if you've ever had an inkling of an idea for a podcast and you just want to start, please email me, logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, that's logan at logantylernelson.com, and I'd love to help you start your own podcast. It's, uh, it's scary, but I know that once you do it and you start taking that step, you'll have so many heroes turn into friends that this podcast for me has changed my life. And I'm not even joking you when I say that. I went from depressed to absolutely impressed with the way I am now in front of people. And I know that sounds a little cheesy, but hey, it's the truth. But anyways, uh, enjoy this interview with Don Hutcherson and myself. He has a great podcast that you got to check out, as well as um, just finding your area of supremacy. It's all about finding your talent, and you have one. I guarantee it. 
It's just waiting for you to unveil and get the message out to many. And a podcast is a way and sharing that is possible. So without further ado, enjoy my interview with Don Hutcherson and myself. Hey, you. Yeah, just you. So I'd really like for you to ask yourself, are you living a life that allows you to exercise your elite strengths? Seriously ask yourself this question. Are you in a job or on a path that is allowing you to work in a field that's exercising your elite strengths? And it doesn't have to be like an athletic strength. It it could be writing or speaking or making friends or even taking care of people by serving them with your skills as a waiter or waitress. Or maybe your talent is being so creative that you can't really land on just one thing. So you go from job to job to job to job without really fully realizing your area of supremacy, as I refer to it. I bring up this topic because my guest today is Don Hutcherson, and he's a master at discovering your talent and doing what you love, because he believes we can live in a world in which more people are doing just this. And so with that, I want to introduce my main man of the hour, or maybe 45 minutes or so, at least, Don Hutcherson. Hey, Don, how you doing, man? Logan, I am doing great. It's nice to be here on the show with you. Ah, thank you so much. I know you run your own podcast, Discovering Your Talent, Doing What You Love, and that podcast needs to be checked out. If you have not listened to that, please, you right now, the one person that's listening to this right now that needs to discover their talent, or if they don't uh, think that they're, uh, you know, like they don't need a new talent, but they love new ideas, definitely check out Don's podcast. Uh, you do a great job over there, man. I really love it. Well, thanks. Thank you. It's uh, you We're having fun with it. We've been doing it about two and a half years. And uh, yeah, it's it really is a labor of love, to say the least. Yeah, I can tell you're loving it. There's like, what, you're like, what, 600 episodes almost? Yeah, 614. Wow. Um, would you say that consistency might be the key to success in anything or... It's well, it's part of it. Yeah, it's certainly a it's certainly a factor. You, once you have an idea, or you're in your sweet spot using your talents, and you have an idea that has a market. And yeah, I think consistency is just the old marketing brand approach, but it it has to do with ourselves as human beings too. I, I think uh, consistency is is very important. Yeah, me too. So, so the mission, I guess, of this show is to really make people feel less alone, you know, give people the tools to live, to start scratching their own itch, you know, by asking themselves quality questions in order to live a life that gives them freedom and money to do the things they love. But I'd like to start off uh, by making someone feel less alone by maybe asking you that story that you'd like to share about something that really challenged you, but ultimately changed you. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a very it's a very vital question. I've been an entrepreneur all my life and the um been in publishing for about 8 years and advertising for about a dozen years and um uh, I got into another field that uh, meant a lot to me an innovative idea that uh, we put a lot of time and effort in a number of years and we were we had all these talented people and we're helping a lot of people around the world and uh we got uh hit by a downturn in the uh, in the economy. And uh, everything was going along great, and we just had to reboot and uh, rethink and pretty much start over. And it was um, after, a, you know, a couple of decades of, you know, having mostly real great success, it was, uh, it was rather devastating. 
And it took us a while to uh, get our heart and soul and mind and bodies back together. We did. But uh, when something like that happens to you, you just have to recalibrate and go deep inside and count on friends and loved ones and the universe to help you heal. So is it safe to say you're you're just like, hey, I, I, you didn't actually get diagnosed with depression, but it was a very depressing time to spend. Oh, it was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was brutal. I mean, it was really, really brutal. And uh, uh, like I said, there were I'd had a, a I was real fortunate to have a long track record of of unbroken success for a couple of decades. And uh, so to have done gotten to that point and, you know, we know life is hard. We, it wasn't like we it wasn't as though we thought we were impervious to any kind of setback. A lot of people were hit by this downturn. It was actually the dot com crash. And, uh, yeah, it, it was just it hit a lot of good people. and. So it was very, uh, you know, it was it was a real serious dose of reality that um, it threw us it threw us for a big loop for for a good while. Ah, uh, but it's so odd how like that thing that that big problem. Uh, the reason why I call it scratch your own itch is, I guess the the proverbial definition of it behind it is really solving a deep, deep, deep scar that you're having an issue with by making a company out of it. Uh, would you say that now you're kind of doing that? Well, you know, it's fascinating. That's a good question. That was um, in 2001, and here we are in 2018. And as you and I have shared in the pre-interview chats, the information and the, the modalities and the content that we had created over that handful of years is now coming back. Uh, we're now able to offer that in other, another form or in a similar form, but with another venue like the podcast. So you never know. You hear that old cliche, what goes around comes around. Well, it can be true in the entrepreneurial world too. So back then we didn't have, I mean, the internet had been around a while, as you know, but compared to today, it was very, very nascent and beginning. Today, it's just ubiquitous and the modalities from podcasting to internet marketing and all its forms from webinars to membership sites are just everywhere. So the idea that we were so excited about that were, has helped tens of thousands of people can now help that many, <laughs> not over a handful of years, but in, you know, in, in, in months actually. So it, it was, uh, our karma was, uh, we, we had good karma on that. Uh, again, 16 years later. Isn't that funny? Wow, time flies. But time flies when you're having fun, right? Yes, yes, it does. And if you stay true to your vision and yourself and your basic values and principles, and, uh, you know, if you just have a little bit of grit, you, you never know. You know, you just trust the process and uh, mostly just stay present and conscious and connected. Um, good things can happen. Often do. Okay, so I want to get super specific with um, with the sort of psychologist that maybe you look up to because I know that this part of discovering your own talent, I think, you no, know, is part of discovering who you are as a person. So, is there anybody that you look up to as a psychologist or maybe a mentor along the way? Actually, um, when you you're talking about discovering who you are as a person, um, one of the Great um, discoveries that uh, that I made along my journey is uh, finding out about a uh, – actually, it's an assessment. Isn't this very interesting? Finding out that there's a way for you to understand how you're hardwired innately to communicate, problem solve, learn, make decisions, and so forth that has been around since the mid-20s, if you can imagine. And uh, just, you know, millions of people have been through it. And I was able to um, to go through it. Uh, this is this was twenty years ago, and realize what a game changer it was. And ultimately, was able to uh, have access to it and and um, get the rights to it and take it and put it in a computerized format. And it's um, has been helping people for many many years. And we're now offering it through this uh, this offering we're doing off of our podcast called the Talent Team. And it's not. It's not personality, it's not interest, it's not values. Those are all very, very important. 
It's not skills, what you learn. Um, it, it's how you're hardwired from the time you're about 14 that this genius at uh, General Electric figured out and ended up doing a foundation, a research foundation that is going on today. And um, it's really, um, that's the source that I think is the, uh, is the square one, if you will, for people to, uh, to do what you are trying to help them do, find their area of supremacy. Because if, it's funny, Peter Drucker, the great management guru, said it many years ago, most people think they know what they're good at. They're usually wrong. <laughs> and they're also probably wrong about what they're not good at. So there's a way from the time you're, you're 15 to find out in a few hours what you, Logan Tyler Nelson or Don Evans Hutchison, are innately good at. And once you do, then you can build on the other essential factors that I talked about earlier to create a strategy and a personal vision for your life. Uh, the reason why I think it's so important for someone to kind of identify of it is just the the confusion is so much less. It's not that it becomes easier. It's still hard because there's there, there's obviously challenges that come along the way. But I think that someone that finally does hone in on that area of supremacy is like, okay, all right, I don't need to do this task because I just... I just know that this is something I don't want to really get better at. But I know that for me, like I love communicating, connecting with people, writing. And for yourself, I know you love speaking with people, talking about the way that they feel like they're truly alive and they feel totally them. What do you think is an overlining uh, sort of trait that someone has when they talk about their passion? Is there like an energy to them or is it just like, um, what sort of characteristics does someone feel when they're in that area of supremacy? Well, the um, Mikhaili Sixtit Mihaly, who ran the University of Chicago psychology department for, for many years, wrote a book that I highly recommend to your listeners um, called Flow, F-L-O-W. And he studied the psychology of optimal experiences for a long, long time. He was a brilliant man and he had access to a lot of resources. And what he found to answer your question, is that people who are, he didn't talk about the innate talents like we do, but he it's really implicit in his whole story, his whole argument. When people are in their flow of using their talents, it's as though time stands still. You're utterly present versus fighting against yourself. You know, the, the story I tell, it's sort of an interesting metaphor, is Michael Jordan playing basketball he was a genius, genius, and now is a genius owner of a basketball team. But it was it was effortless. He won three NBA championships, and he was MVP. He went off to try baseball because he's he was interested in it since he was a young man, and he he wasn't good at it. He was okay, but he tried and he he wasn't that successful. And so he went back to the NBA, and guess what? He won three more NBA championships <laughs> and a couple more MVPs. So if you can find out, and you can, what those innate talents and abilities are, how you're hardwired, as soon as you can, it might be it might be 15, it might be 75, but it's life is going to be a lot more manageable and easy for you because it literally follows your innate um, hardwiring of how you engage the world. That is so cool. I've yeah, I've heard of that the author Stephen Kotler is incredible, and I will. Uh... Certainly put that in the show notes because I just, I believe that once you do find that flow state, time just moves. You don't know where it goes. And then once it, once like that two or three hours goes by, it's usually like, wow. And I got a lot of stuff that I really care about done, which is going to kind of lead me to the next question. Where do you think, uh, what's your definition of productivity? I know that's a, it's a really like, like everyone wants to be like productivity hackers. What's your de definition of productivity? Well, I, it's, I think like we're talking about the flow state. If you can set, you know, goal setting and time management and all are, are, are vital to anyone's success. I don't care what you're doing. But when you can use your optimum talents and natural abilities and aptitudes, um, more than you don't. Every, you know, we all have to do roles and tasks in our, whether we're entrepreneurs or working for somebody else. 
we all have to do things that are not in our sweet spot because you just you just have to. But my idea of productivity is when if you are that writer like you're talking about, or if you are that strategist, or if you are that potter or dancer or um, I don't care, brain surgeon, teacher, uh, you're productive if you're using more of your talents, uh, more of the day by far than you're not. It's just that. And, and when you do with some organization and some basic time management, you, I don't think you can beat that because you add huge value to the world, but you're also able to uh, just do It's Michael Jordan playing basketball instead of baseball. You're just able to um, to be who you are to the to the nth degree. Yeah, and when you finally step into who you are, isn't it just so much less exhausting? Like it, it just seems like energy comes to you so much easier. Um, well, you, well, well, it's not. It's not. There is no. I mean, working hard is always. You know, you get tired, but the difference between using your innate talents and abilities. And, and and again, I want to stress it, it's it's not just that you have to you have to also be in sync with your values and be in sync with your your personal style and your passions and interest and the skills which is what we pick up and learn and et cetera. You have to be all those have to be in sync. But when you come from the place of your greatest strengths, it's um it's more it's certainly more joyful even if the tasks are difficult and you've got a lot of pressure on you. It's just it's just a lot easier. I'm sure he was. Jordan was stressed playing in the NBA championships, but again, that's what he did innately well. Yeah, uh, of course. I, my father is a huge fan of Michael Jordan. Uh, I know. I I, I kind of like football. I kind of like basketball. I kind of like sports just a little bit. Not everything is great about sports, but I really I'm into art, and so I like to ask you: Do you think? Sometimes, uh, like millennials, will f- find something that they really love to do, but it just doesn't make money. So, what what happens then? Do you do you think people should like first um, worry about making money and then find their 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 s- sort of area of supremacy, or do you think someone should find a mentor? What path do you think someone should take? And yeah, that's a splendid that's a splendid question. I think if you go through a process, uh, wh- what I see on on in this journey, I've been studying this, you know, forty years, Logan. Is what I see is that we don't. I mean, if eighty five percent of the people around the world are not using their talents to the best of their abilities, and almost seventy percent of people in this country, and these are studies for thirty years by Gallup, you got to know that we're not. There's some part of the process we're not doing right. So if when you start out, if you can start out, or you know, understanding yourself, you know, do we don't do enough reflection, enough homework. We don't get a mentor. You know, we go to a career counselor or an HR manager who are competent people, but you know, we 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 have so many people wanting to give us ideas and influence, and those are helpful. But it's an inside game. So your listeners out there. You know, maybe there's somebody who wanted to be an artist, but they they didn't think they could make it, so they got into real estate sales, and it's they're making a good living, but there's still this 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 itch that needs to be scratched. Okay, well, um, you can do a side hustle. You know, you can you can scratch that itch that way, or if you'd started out and really understood that you have this artistic temperament and innate abilities, maybe you could have explored. It's not just doing paintings or doing sculpture or doing performing arts, there are a zillion ways that that person could have gotten into the artistic field, the creative field, if they had explored more of who they are and what really matters to them and had a personal vision, which is seminal to this, so that they could have seen that it wasn't just art or real estate. And real estate's great, by the way, for, for a lot of people. Uh, but they could have seen there are a lot of ways to slice that tomato where they could have melded making money with their creative passion. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's uh, wow, wow. That's a really, that's a really great answer. I love that. Um, Thanks. And usually, I'm not all about the answers on this show. I'm just asking. To, I'm just all about the the questions. Uh, but th- that was like, that was spot on. I love it um, because. Well, thanks. Thanks. It gives a sort of like, I think what it does is it gives a person a step to take, and then also just a uh, sort of like definition of success 
for what it could look like if you started taking this first step. And so what do you think your definition of success is for someone that's finally doing something they love? And uh, yeah. Well, I, I have, I've had four agenda items for 50 years, and that is create something out of nothing, do good, have fun, and make a good living at it. But in that order, I like to be creative. I like to make the, try to make the world a better place in whatever small way I can. And I want to be in the flow and have fun, but I also want to support myself. And so, you know, there are billionaires out there that maybe are not using their talents and something is left unspoken or there are people that are struggling to make ends meet. Um, I like what Warren Buffett says, the, the, the multi-billionaire. He, sa he said to a group of students in the last couple of years, okay, I've, I'm, you know, I've got more money than most of you maybe, but he said, that's not what does it for me. He said, it's, it's nice. Money's great. But he said, every day that I wake up, and I think he's a, a genuine guy from what I can tell, he says, I get to, to do what I do best. And so to me, it's, uh, it's just being in that flow that we've been talking about and just being your authentic self. I mean, um, uh, I was just listening to some um, – or reading an article about students today that are sort of disengaged because they haven't found their purpose. And they talk about the power of social media and the good news and bad news about it. And where do they get their identity and how do they find out who they really are? Well, okay. I love social media. I love the internet. I, I'm a huge advocate. I'm, I'm making my living off of it. But the questions that we've been asking ourselves for thousands of years, thousands and thousands of years, start with the seminal question. People say it's your why, right? Well, that's the second question, in my opinion. You start with, who am I? Who am I? Who is, who is this person? Who is this person, Don Hutchison and Logan Nelson? And what makes me tick? You know, my parents, my advisors, my best friends, my all these people can give you insights, but only you know what's inside that is that wee small voice that you've known since you, since you were conceived. It's there. It's always there. It's always been there, and it always be, will be there. And it's up to you. It's your job, my job, to um, to have the take the time and have the guts to go back inside and and listen to it and figure out a strategy to to make it work. Whether it's a full time gig or whether it's just a part time passion, does it matter? What's your life worth to you? Wow. Yeah. My, the hairs on my neck are standing up right now. Uh, Thank you. I, I, no, I just really appreciate that so much because we're almost getting obsessed with the idea of like finding our purpose and, and whatnot. But I, I kind of want to pivot uh, onto your, because you've had experience of doing s hundreds of interviews and you learn a lot about people and you learn a lot about not only what makes them tick, I want to ask you, and you don't have to name names or whatever. What have you seen? Have you ever seen any of the people that you've interviewed that thought they had a certain talent? Like they were 100% sure that this was their talent. And then all of a sudden, two years later, you see them doing something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful question because you're right. We are so, we're so logic driven. You know, I love Einstein said, I never came upon one of my discoveries through the process of logical, rational thinking. And he was a pretty <laughs> smart guy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was pretty smart. Well, what we give our – the brain is, is, is a, an amazing thing. It's a great tool. I mean, I, but our instincts – I don't know what's out there. I'm not religious, but I think there's a higher power that's vaster than we can ever comprehend. There's some universal power out there. But our beingness, if you will, is not just our – our mind and our logic and our knowledge, that's Chester Bernard said we hire people for their skills, but the whole person shows up for work. And it's that whole person. We see that. Yeah, we do see that in, in the vast majority of interviews that people might get out there. And again, we call this a lemming conspiracy, you know, that, that metaphor about rodents that mass together and run off cliffs every handful of years. It's a metaphor. But we, we get caught in the systems and whether we come from a highly privileged or not background, 
there's some programming that goes in there from our family of origin, from our schools and our organizations that are very, very difficult. It's the matrix, okay, that are very difficult to overcome. It's not some insidious plot. It's just the way that our society works. And so until we can say, okay, okay, that's great. Uh, my, my dad, I had, a, I had a really fine father and mother, and this is an example. He, I was a good student. I wasn't the rocket scientist of the class by any stretch, but I worked hard and I was a good student. So he wanted me to be a, a dentist. You know why? Because it was shorter than medical school. So I'm taking two years of chemistry in high school and two years of biology, and, you know, I made good grades. So I get into college, and I take real chemistry, <laughs> college-level chemistry. And Logan, I knew within about, uh, I don't know, two weeks of studying my behind off that I, I can't think like that. My, in, my innate abilities are not hardwired to do that kind of real serious scientific thinking. So I went to the dean's office the day before you could drop courses without flunking out. And I said, Dean Logan, I, I'm not that guy. He said, what do you want to do, son? And I said, I don't know. I, I just can't do this. So I dropped chemistry and picked up philosophy in German. And in my sweet spot, I didn't know it was, but I did. And I made a 4.0 and went on to have a, you know, a good college career. I would have flunked out. So that's an example of I doing, I was in the system, loving father, you know, loving mother. I went to my dad and I said, dad, um, I love you. Yeah. I know you want the best for me. The, the the scientific route, the science route, the dentist, medicine, even the arch all that's that's I can't do it. It's not who I am. And to his credit, you know, he, he said, Well, son, you, you gotta you gotta be who you are. And then I told you the rest of the story. I went on and after the military, I was lucky enough to listen to my instincts and follow the entrepreneurial route and found out I'm a an outside the box thinker and a, a really good communicator and all those things that are altogether different talents from the the scientific uh uh, mechanical side. Wow, uh, uh, that is an incredible example. I just it, well, the thing that I want to point out, though, the thing that uh, is the underlying talent that not a lot of people have, and that is the ability to put other people down to follow your own heart, even people that you love. Like that is it's, it's the hard it's the hardest thing there is. It is. It is. Yeah, that's a great insight because. You know, again, it's it's all about self awareness. Know thyself, said Aristotle or Socrates. I forget which which one said that. But yeah, know thyself, and you can get feedback from those people. Of course, you can get feedback from your best friend and your parents and mentors. But again, when you put your head on the pillow at night, or when you wake up in the morning first thing bright and early, you you know. What, who you are. I, I mean, you, you can know who you are if you get outside the matrix and think for yourself and you'd say, you know, like you said, uh, you know, we had a we had a, um, a, a guest on the show who'd been a lawyer, a managing partner at a successful law firm, a big law firm, and you know, he'd been doing it for 15 years. And he woke up one day and realized that his real his real innate abilities were not in the management structural part of process of, of, of management, but in the problem solving and conceptual framework of solving complex legal issues. And he'd been doing that for, like I said, 12 or 15 years, doing very well, but it didn't float his boat. So he, he found out more, actually went through this assessment I was talking about and said, wait a minute, yeah, I can do this, but there's something else I can do better. So he <laughs> he negotiated with his partners and his his family and and ended up, as it worked out, even doing better financially. And he wasn't really as worried about that as he was his satisfaction. But he had measurably more satisfaction, you know, doing, doing what his, his natural gifts were. Wow. And you just don't know what you don't know. Like, right? Like he did. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, exactly. That's what, uh, one thing I, I've been starting to do is just, uh, you know, if, and I, and I really invite anybody that is listening to this, or I invite you to do this. If you really want to do it, we're all, we're all not getting out of here alive. So the worst thing that could happen is you find out something that you don't like. And I think if you find it out sooner, instead of spending a bunch of time doing it, 
uh, it is really, really hard to get out of it, of course. But the main thing is you're listening to this right now and you have no fears. You have no like doubts or anything. Like you're super motivated. But what do you think, Don, is the thing that allows people to be motivated and be more fearless in something that they're trying while they're not listening to this? You know, while they're not, well, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, you make a good point. The, the, um, when we get to the end of the interview and the show, we say 85% of the people around the world with Gallup's latest, latest study and this year, actually, and the Q study and then the American Workforce study, 67%. Of people that don't aren't engaged, they they say they're not using the best of who they are every day, and so we say to people, "Okay, you've been on the show telling us for twenty five minutes about your journey, and in in inevitably, invariably, Logan, their journeys were not a perfect piece of cake. Nobody's was, nobody's was. I mean, Steve Jobs or some of the billionaires out there, they didn't. Their journey wasn't a straight line piece of cake, but invariably, a majority of people just say it's what we talked about a minute ago. It's just fear." And you answered it just a minute ago very eloquently. Wouldn't you rather test as early as you can your different aspects of yourself so that you can find out what works for you and what doesn't instead of waiting for 15 years like that lawyer did? And that was the best he could do. But wouldn't you like to find out? So that's where the exploration and the self-awareness come in and realizing that you have choices and you don't have to get you don't have to buy off on, oh, my gosh. I mean, there are parents now called helicopter parents, bless their souls. And they're really in New York, they're, they're stressing over whether their child, are you ready for this, can get into the right kindergarten. Okay? I mean, I'm sorry. I, I know they love their kids, but, you know, we're not talking about are they stressing about getting their kids into the right university or Ivy League school or wherever they think they ought to go. They're so focused on the path. And the credentials and the the uh, the learning as the essential be all end all, and it's a vital piece. But it's not the be all and end all. the The end all and be all is you knowing you. Until you do that, in my forty plus years of studying this and studying the great masters, mostly is until you can answer who am I, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, philosophically, um, in every possible way then it's going to be very hard for you to get the most out of this plane of existence. Wow. Yeah. And that's, you know, like you were saying earlier with the right type of reflection and the right type of uh, mindfulness and all that. Yeah. So just yeah. And it can be as pragmatic. It can be as pragmatic. You know, I started meditating a zillion years ago when I was, you know, in my twenties, just, I, I, I don't know. I was just open to it. And, that's really been helpful to me. But, you know, it, whatever the modality is, it doesn't matter as long as it works for you getting next to you. It could be journaling. It could be taking peaceful walks. I, I do know that it sure doesn't happen with you just sitting there uh, in, your, in your logical mind trying to analytically solve it because it's not, it's not a problem. It's like Einstein saying he never came upon one of his discoveries with rational thinking. This isn't a rational problem. The logic plays a part in the strategy piece and in the problem-solving piece. Of course it does. But until you can listen to that wee small voice and understand that interesting um, uh, model of who you are that makes Logan, Logan, and Don, Don, until you can l really look at yourself holistically, um, it's very difficult to, um, to get any kind of results that's going to have meaning long-term because we go through turning points every five or six years. As we develop, I mean, the, the psychologists have pointed this out for decades and decades. So what made me happy at 20 is going to be different than 28 or 36 or 45 or it's all the, the everything is going to change depending on what age I am and what my, how my priorities shift with family and success or obstacles. It's all going to change. And so you've got to be able to reorient your compass of yourself during those uh, during those changes, and how can you do that if you don't have a certain body of knowledge about about yourself in a more holistic way? Yeah, uh, it's so funny as humans, we 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 think that we can control everything. So, I guarantee a lot of uh, time. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking 
uh, to myself, but I'm also speaking to that one person that needs to hear this, that you want to control everything, right? And so you try to control everything by gaining the most knowledge on a certain subject instead of actually getting off your chair and or getting outside and meeting new people or, or stretching yourselves in these new uh, places of curiosity um, because... If you don't, it gives you incredible anxiety uh, if you don't take action and you just keep 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 thinking about it. So I want to ask you, Don, um, as we're about to wrap up, uh, just a few sort of scratching the surface curiosity questions. Um, and the first first one is, is sort of like that is, what do you think is an area in which you've kind of been curious about uh, that maybe like you just didn't take action on it right away, but once you did, you were like, all right, that was, that was stupid. Why did I take so much time to actually, uh, just try it out? Well, it's interesting. Um, that's a, that's really a good question because I was, when I was in the publishing business, one of the, um, you know, one of the ways publishing companies, magazines make money is through, is through advertising and of course, and sponsorships and et cetera. And I was always intrigued with, um, with that, that field as well as the publishing field. And so I, I didn't explore that because I, I was in the same area and the same expertise of a magazine that I co-founded. And I ended up, um, uh, my partner and I just parted ways over, over philosophical differences. And so I opened the door to this whole other field, this whole advertising field. And uh, through some exploration and just being receptive to that communication side of the business, I ended up delving into and exploring that whole advertising uh, niche and ended up, you know, with, with some great partners building a, a highly successful um, advertising company, but just by, you know, just the, taking a catalytic moment where I something was going to end, but I opened myself up to other possibilities and saw that uh, that was a way that my communication skill and my collaboration skills and my problem solving skills could be learned, not just in publishing, but in advertising. That is awesome. Just another insight on like joining the dots, only going backwards instead of forwards. Um, I guess the yeah. the next question I'd love to ask you, uh, not to cut you off. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to. Um, That's all right. That's all right. But uh, I'd love to ask you because I, I'm writing a book right now on beliefs and how beliefs can actually like allow us to to start doing the thing that is really, 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 really important to you and how you can start branding yourself uh, just from changing your beliefs. So what's a belief that you had maybe 10 years ago about yourself that you think now like, wow, I'm 180 degrees different on that belief? Oh, gosh. When I was, um, when I was a very young man, many, you know, several decades ago, I uh, I didn't really have a sense because I again I was just looking at it from the point of view of being in the matrix. I saw um, so many people I went to school with, uh, high school or college, having these amazing talents and uh, you know analytical skills or uh, uh, scientific skills or intellectual skills, and I thought, gosh, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of those people. And uh, I mean, I'm smart, but I'm not. I mean, I had brilliant friends that, you know, made all the high test scores and went off to the Ivy League schools. I went to a good school, but but not Ivy League. And and I realized as I got into um, my own businesses that what I have that a lot of people didn't is the ability to think outside the dots, speaking of dots, not just connecting them, but thinking outside the dots and taking a fresh perspective. And I didn't know I was that person until I was, gosh, in my... Uh, Shoot, probably late twenties, for heaven's sakes. I didn't know that I had the capacity to th see the see the forest and the trees, if you will. You know, people can see the big picture and they can see the details, but usually they can't do both. And I didn't know until I I started my second company, and I realized that I could see opportunities um, with a, a perspective that a lot of people couldn't, and it proved out in the success of those companies. But I didn't know I had that in me. I wasn't sure, I, I, you know, if you'd said it when I was that age in my late 20s, or, can you do that? I'd say, oh, heck no. That's left to the creative entrepreneurs. And, I, and then as I got into it and did, this worked over eight or 10 years and that worked over eight or 10 years, I said, hmm, isn't that interesting? 
I guess I do have those those talents. But you couldn't measure it with a with a formal, you know, uh, intelligence test or anything. It was just based. It was experiential. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. That is, oh, I love that answer. Um, Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I haven't asked this question before on my sort of scratching the surface curiosity questions, but it's something that uh, because you're a podcaster of many, 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 many inter- interviews, I want to ask you what is sort of like piece of tech? We love it. We hate it. Um, but we got to have tech in our life. It's uh, sort of that thing. What piece of tech has made your life way more easier? Oh, gosh. There, there are so many. I'm a Luddite. I'm a Luddite. <laughs> you, know, you know what a Luddite is? You know what a Luddite is? I've, I've heard it on other episodes and people talk about Luddites yeah. being. Well, well, it's during the Industrial Revolution, you know, when they started bringing in. This is back in the, gosh, late 1800s. The, the Luddite, they just wanted the old factory system to work and they didn't want innovation. And so technologically wise, I don't know how to do the HTML code and I don't know how to do the, the underpinnings. but. I love all the different, um, the technological innovation. So whether it's, my goodness, whether it's just l- loving the genius of, of a Google search or the genius of, um, you know, I, I, I love social media. You know, my generation has mixed reviews about it. I mean, I'm all in for it. So, I mean, the, what happened, I think Facebook is a staggeringly powerful idea. And I think LinkedIn and, and Twitter and there, there's so many different modalities that uh the the podcasting thing we're doing right now is that amazing i mean when i was in the ad business you'd have to spend uh we had clients that would spend millions of dollars a year to get to get their message out there and you and i talking here can get this out to you know tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people just with this you know simple simple interview and um so you know i think that i don't have one particular that i'm crazy about but I guess I have to say in summary, I'm crazy about any innovation that allows us to work more efficiently and and connect in a good way and spread information and knowledge. In 1900, information doubled every 100 years, and in 1945, it doubled every 25 years. I'm talking about information in the world. Well, today, IBM tells us it's not going to be too long before it doubles every day. (laughs) And so... You know, and I think the the vast majority of that is um, is really good. You know, I think it's so that so I'm a I may be a luddite in terms of how it works, but not in terms of the end benefit. I love it. I, I love how there's like several <laughs> several tech pieces that you kind of love. I mean, the podcasting, oh yeah, social media. Um, is there any uh, specific app that you use that you really like? Yeah, I use uh, I use the Sparrowbound Notebook. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've uh, I've heard, I I think I've heard of that one. You know what? I love that one. <laughs> I love uh, I love I, I, because I'm so right brained. I have to um, I have to keep up I'm, with all these interviews, with all the research we have to do for the various categories we're serving. I really do uh, still, and and we're every, you know we're everything is technologically computerized and everything and. Well, we keep up with all our information on all these different apps, but I still like writing things down and I still like keeping notebooks and files and being able to touch something. I'm very tactile and kinesthetic. Yeah. I, in the same way, I, uh, I, I, when, when I'm like writing on my computer for hours, I'm like, I just need to like get away from this thing and I need to just write on a piece of paper and bend and it feels so good. It's, um, when you only do it once in a while, it's actually really, uh, it's like a treat to like just do long handwriting. It's really odd. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Anyways, I'd love to ask you just uh one more question, and uh, I think you've kind of answered it, but I I, I want to just uh, leave it out strong because this this whole entire conversation to me is just meant the world to me because it's just I uh, I really love talking about this stuff, and I, I know that more and more people are struggling with trying to find their sort of area of supremacy like it's hiding behind a rock but i just want people to know that i want people to know the truth uh, which you've given them is just by trying things and doing things and failing fast and and um there is no recipe for uh certainty but the last question i'd love to ask you is 
Um, it's a fill in the blank sort of question. If people started to do X, Y, Z, the craziest thing would start happening to their life. If people would start simply slowing down, um, we live in a frantic world, a go, 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 get, get, get world. If people would start slowing down five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day to just breathe deeply, not sitting there. I mean, just just by themselves, no dog or cat or loved ones or family or friends or not just sitting in a Starbucks, but if they would slow down and just let the mind slow down so that they can feel what they're feeling. If they can reflect on that day and what was really the, what were the high spots that worked so well? What were the times they wanted to pull their hair out? They were so frustrated doing that job or being in that setting. Then they will be able to get a perspective on how it's working for them now. They'll get a perspective on that, and then they can start, once they get a perspective, then they can start paying attention to those moments when they were in the flow and think about how in that current position or that role or whatever it is, they can do more of that or how they can get the hell out of there, do less of that and do something more that they care about and start developing a strategy on their own terms, starting with who they are. That is amazing. That is, uh, I'm really, 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 really proud of anybody that listened to that just now, that one person that needs to hear that right now, um, to actually listen to it and do something with it instead of just passively listening to it. The greatest thing about this form of education right now is that you can listen to us and just have us as heroes, maybe in your mind, like, oh, wow, I want to be like Don or I want to be like Logan. And I would be so honored for you to even think in that way or that capacity. But I really created this podcast to allow yourself to become friends with us, to allow yourself to start yes. Instagramming, Facebooking this stuff, tweeting it out, all that, like all that stuff to get on the ethos. So if you want to get connected with me, you guys know how to, I'll, I'll include that at the end, but if they want to get connected to you, Don, how can they get connected to you and become friends with you? Yes. Discover your talent podcast.com. Uh, Don Hutchison 11 on Twitter. Uh, we have a Facebook fan page. We're on LinkedIn, Don Hutchison, the discover your talent podcast. Um, and of course, you know, like I said, they can go to our homepage, discoveryourtalentpodcast.com. This talent team thing is coming out in the next couple of months, and that's going to be um, not just assessments, but also membership sites and everything. And they can, uh, if they're interested, they can let us know and we can put them on a list to, to be the first in line. W one, just one final message, though, if I may, Logan, that I want to say. Anybody out there, I, I don't care what age or what you're doing, you can do this. You can, on some level, find that satisfaction, that success and freedom on your own terms. Um, you can do this. It's in there, and those talents are in there. I don't care what field you're in. Uh, I don't care what your background is. You can do this. And if you believe that, and you're willing to have the courage to man up or woman up and do the things you and I have been talking about here on this fine interview, Anything's possible, and it's not a pipe dream. It's not some motivational rah-rah BS that, you know, there's so much of out there. This is just the, the, the spiritual, emotional, intellectual, physical side of you will allow you to do that if, you, if you'll stop and take the time to just do some of the basic things you and I have been sharing here. It's in there, and you can do it. Ah, oh, yeah. I have to virtual high five Don like crazy and give him a, a nice bro hug. And, and like the, this man is brilliant. If you don't check out his podcast, I'm just letting you know that um, you're leaving yourself from d discovering something that you might not discover. Uh, so please check his podcast out. No joke. Uh, it's amazing. I, I, I think it's a great resource for people to also just discover new people that are changing things that are doing big, 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 big things around the world. Uh, authors, writers, obviously authors, writers, uh, the entrepreneurs, um, filmmakers, uh, you name it. How about, yeah, even the, the teachers, the counselors, the, the coaches, the, 
the the ministers and rabbis and pastors and all the different religious denominations, all those that are just sharing the the uh, massage therapists, the it's not just the big idea people; it's the people living lives on their own terms and and being in that flow we talked about and adding value and feeling at peace when they put their heads on the pillow to go to sleep at night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for creating that resource for us, Don. And uh, Well, it's a real, real pleasure talking with you today, Logan. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, likewise. So uh, hopefully we'll get you back on one of these days, but uh, until then, thank you. And I will talk to you later. Take care of yourself. Thank you. All right, there's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch with Don Hutcherson and myself. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the show by listening and hit that subscribe button. Don't miss another episode. As well as if you have some time, please leave a review. I know it's hard. I know it's a little bit tougher to leave a review, but I really appreciate it. Um, Any, any, any review is great. It just uh, lets me know that you're keeping in touch. And like I said earlier in the beginning of the show, if you have any inkling of an idea for a podcast of your own, please message me at logan at logantylernelson.com and join my Facebook group, Scratch Your Own Itch, Creating a Life Worth Living. And just one more thing before I let you guys go. Don't ever forget. You matter and you're enough. And if this show was in- inspirational or instructive, well, I'm looking for mostly instructive because inspiration only lasts for a, a while. But when you truly take action on something that you heard from this episode and you tweet it out, Facebook or Instagram about it, I really appreciate it. But like I said earlier, don't ever forget, you matter and you're enough. Whoa.